Don't want to follow the rules of the log haul road? Sure, go right on through. Posted by Scarlet Witch 713. For context, I, a 27-year-old female, work for a small local security company. We mainly do oil and gas and logging roads. I typically work pipeline security, but I'm between sites at the moment waiting for spring breakup, which is when the ground starts to thaw and the heavy equipment and trucks can't operate because this is swampland. Before breakup, they've got a 24-7 log haul happening on one of the big logging roads in our area. Now, because of this, traffic going against the log trucks is being restricted by us. I sit down at the far end of the log road and control who can go through the wrong way. This is limited to three companies and their subcontractors because their sites are close to my end of the road and they don't interfere with the log trucks. Any company that's in violation of this rule receives a $10,000 fine and their road use privileges are affected. In this case, they can still only travel one way on the road once breakup hits and the log haul has to stop until the logging company says otherwise. One company in particular has been one massive pain this whole time. Let's call them Stupid Incorporated for privacy reasons. Now, Stupid Incorporated's site sits about halfway down the log road. They have to go down to the far end of the road and drive the same direction as the log trucks. Well, they don't bother telling their subcontractors this, so all day, every day, I'm busy turning these guys away. One morning last week, this big pickup pulls up and I asked the usual of, hey, where are you headed? He gave me the kilometer number of where the site is. It's Stupid Incorporated. Only, he gives me a different company name, a subcontractor. We'll call that one Jerk Company. I informed the guy that he couldn't go this way, and he lost it. He starts cursing and swearing, yelling about how it's complete BS and I shouldn't be allowed to do this. He tells me he's gone this way down the road plenty of times when he's not working and it's never been an issue. The thing is that private users, so just regular people, are technically allowed. Legally speaking, we can't stop them, as roads are public to a degree. There's a whole thing that I'm not going to get into. Private users are allowed to use the road, though we strongly caution against it. He said, all right, then I'm a private user and you can't stop me. I reply, well, you just told me that you're here for work, but all right, if you say so, you've been warned. And he floors it on down the road. What followed was a four day manhunt. I immediately notified the road patrol supervisor, as well as road patrol and my boss. I was asked questions for four days while they tried to identify this guy because he said he was gonna work for Stupid Incorporated, they got hit with the fine. Of course, this didn't go over well with them either. The next thing I know, the site superintendent is asking me tons of questions about the guy. When I said he worked for Jerk Company, well, that didn't go over well. From my understanding, Jerk Company was at a risk of losing the contract they had with Stupid Incorporated over this. Jerk Company then started digging around and I heard they found out who it was and the guy lost his job over it. The kicker? He wasn't even working for Stupid Incorporated that day. The superintendent told me they didn't have Jerk Company out working on anything. One of his employees had seen the truck I described way on the other side of Stupid Incorporated's site. He hadn't even stopped there. As far as anyone knows, he actually was there as a private user. And had he just said as much, none of this would have happened. Now I do need to clear up a couple of things. It's not like the guy said, yeah, I work for this company, but I'm off today. I get that a lot actually and never have an issue with it. The guy specifically told me he worked for Jerk Company and was working down at Kilometer X, which was the location for Stupid Incorporated. I asked him to confirm the company he was headed to work for and he specifically named Stupid Incorporated. I told him that company and their subcontractors were not allowed to go that way, and he started yelling and swearing at me. During his hissy fit, he said he's been down that road several times when not working. I told him that private users, so individuals not there on behalf of a company, legally can't be stopped. It's a legal gray area. Yes, it's stupid, but private user equals not there representing a company equals can go. Employee or subcontractor equals there to do work on behalf of a company equals cannot go. After explaining this, he got all smug looking and declared he was a private user. He thought he'd found a loophole. It wasn't like he said, well, I'm actually not here for work today. I just do work for this company. 
Instead, he was a straight up butthole about the entire situation and very clearly lied to my face about being a private user. Again, I don't know why he was truly there. I never found out. All I know is he lied to my face, gave me trouble, which is another finable offense actually, but that's a whole other thing, and thought he'd found a loophole. The way the situation itself played out, I guarantee, based on the information given to me by him, that I was not confused on the matter. Also, when I say four day manhunt, what I mean is that it took four days for the various companies to figure out exactly who this guy was as he didn't give me a name. And it's an incredibly common truck description. He didn't vanish into the woods never to be seen again. Apologies for any confusion there. I was never hoping the guy would lose his job. Honestly, I wanted him to get chewed out as a nice bit of karma. This dude was nasty. Very colorful language, and at 6.10 a.m., I was so not in the mood to get screamed at. I knew about the fine, which is why I said, you've been warned, prior to him taking off. I knew that things were going to be ugly for him when his boss got his hands on him. I did not hope or really expect that he would lose his job. I can't deny that I do feel a tiny sliver of satisfaction, because guys like this need to be taken down several pegs. But I do also feel bad that it cost him his job. I believe this would be a case of screw around and find out, and I sincerely hope that he's learned something from this and will be nicer to people just doing their jobs in the future. Okay, point number one here, this guy is really suspicious and shady, I don't know what he's doing, why he's going there, but he's lying about it, being rude, things do not look very good for this guy at all, so hey, good job on doing any kind of reporting or notating in the story or to any of your superiors, this guy's crazy, what do you think? How not to get new clients, lose existing clients, and get two weeks paid time off, posted by Edek FC. Some 10 years ago, I was switching jobs after over seven years at my previous one. I decided I was done with printers and stuff and wanted something new, and I found this company that was supplying CCTV, security, and fire alarms. The company had branches in a few bigger cities in my country. The pay was worse than my previous job, but I figured it's not that bad and I really wanted to switch jobs. I was contracted for three months of a trial period and it's common practice in my country. It's a type of short term job employment contract, usually one to three months, that legally has the same terms as a regular job contract with often some limits on company benefits like private medicare or gym pass or whatever, and after which we'll decide if I'm staying or not. My boss was the regional manager and I've had a coworker who had been hired earlier. Our branch was open for a few months at this point. Now it's important to note that the company only dealt in business to business, no retail, and we didn't even have a fiscal printer. Now that is mandatory if you want to do retail sales. So our clients were all companies, big and small. And per company policy, we specialized in electrical equipment installation. Now in my country, all businesses are registered in a central database and the type of stuff done is one of the required stuff from a vast catalog of what can be done commercially. This is tied to the pricing levels. You run an electric company, you get better prices than a flower company. You get the idea. The company had a CRM customer relationship management software in which we were required to note every interaction with our clients. When I asked our regional manager about how it should be kept, a conversation followed. I said, so I need to note only sales or some other stuff as well. He said, everything, each call, each visit, each sale, and you need to schedule the client's next visit or call. You're to contact each of your clients at least once a week to keep up relations and note everything in the CRM. It's connected to the phone billing so we know when you've made the calls or not. Okay, so I'm supposed to call each client at least once a week for a chat? Yes, and make notes in the CRM. You realize calling that often will annoy most clients. This is a company's policy. We want our clients to be cared about and it's your job to do it. I think everyone knows this is not how you build a positive relationship with your potential clients. We're all sick and tired of banks or phone companies calling with yet another great offer. But fine, it's not my place to argue with company policy. I split with my coworkers the clients that we had registered, found a few more potential contacts on the internet, and for the next few weeks, I'd call each of my clients. First, to introduce myself as their new sales guy and asked if I can contact them once in a while to check up on things. I didn't note how often I'd check up on things. 
and after a few weekly calls, some clients stopped answering. Others blocked me, and I noticed I get straight to voicemail, that's pretty obvious. And some got annoyed with the pestering and voiced that with all the manner of euphemisms. My favorite was, I kindly ask you to take up a journey to the land of up your butt and to the left, or straight up insults about wasting their time and if they want something from me, they'll get back to me. I obviously noted every call in the CRM as explicitly instructed. But just in case someone actually read it, I refrained from citing insults and just went with client angry about two frequent contacts, next contact on this date, and that was always in one week's time. All this didn't win me any favors with the client base, with one exception, but it hardly made a difference. Because we managed to antagonize most of our current and potential clients, we obviously didn't get much sales done, so we weren't allowed to keep much wares on our local stock. This meant that if someone would actually stumble into our store, the shelves would mostly be empty to the point that putting together a small CCTV setup would be impossible because we'd have like one DVR, two cameras of the same type, and one hard drive for the DVR. By that point, we'd get resupply twice a week, so if the client ordered something on Thursday, the order would arrive on the next Tuesday afternoon at the earliest. This was often unacceptable, so clients would scrap the order. We did some business from time to time, but I'm pretty sure our branch was not making enough to even sustain itself, not to mention making a profit for the company. After about seven to eight weeks, I was dialing one of my clients again to check up if he doesn't need anything. Let's call him Red. I was about to hang up with no answer when he did pick it up. I said, hi, this is Ed from Company X. Can I take a moment? At this point, he furiously interrupted me, yelling, Are you freaking serious? I nearly fell off the ladder thinking it's something important, and it's you again? Didn't I freaking tell you not to bother me again? Are you freaking stupid? This rant went on for a while. The guy was really creative when it comes to various combinations of insults, something that I think is impossible in the English language. When he finally made a long enough pause for me to chime in, I went with my, at this point, usual explanation. I'm sorry you find these calls disturbing, but it's our company's policy to keep a close contact with our best clients. Red never actually bought anything. He said, I don't give a crap about your company's policy. Get me your supervisor. I said, yes, sir. I happily gave him my boss's rank, name, and phone number. He paused for a moment, I'm guessing to note the info that I've given him, and then he hung up without a word. I dutifully noted the conversation in the CRM, noting that client angry, requested contact to supervisor, complied. After about half an hour, my regional manager called me. He said, did you call Red today? I did, like I do on a weekly basis per instructions. Okay, don't call him again. I'm sure Red gave him a piece of his mind about the company policy. Next week, the one guy that didn't mind my calls strolls into the store and from the door asks, Hey, I hear you're closing up shop? I look at my coworker with surprised expressions. She mirrors it. We asked him where he heard about it, and he answered vaguely, uh, That's the word around town. We told him that we don't know anything about it. He ordered some basic stuff we usually don't have on hand, and he left. When I put out the order to arrive in the next shipment, I got a call from the HQ warehouse. Hi, did you order X and Y? Yeah, I did. Is there a problem? Yeah, kinda. All your deliveries are on hold and we can't ship anything to you. I put the two and two together, thanked him for the info, hung up, and shared the revelation with my coworker. She contacted the regional manager to ask about it and he claimed that it must be some kind of mistake and not to worry. The same week on Friday, the regional manager arrived at 9 o'clock. We opened the store at 8 and went straight to the point. Here are the papers to relieve you from work as of Monday. Today, we pack all of the stock and equipment and at 1400 hours, there'll be a truck to pick up everything and the store is done. Now, work relief is a document that basically tells you that you're still employed as per contract, keeping the pay and social security, but you don't have to actually work and it doesn't deplete your annual batch of vacation days. Now we get 20 to 26 paid vacation days a year. It's used usually when an employee needs to be terminated with notice, period, but you don't want to keep him around for the time remaining. In my case, I was two weeks until my trial period was to end, so I got the remainder of that time off with pay, and the contract would just end. My coworker had two weeks notice period per her contract. 
I listed the brief time spent at this company as branch closing specialist on my LinkedIn. I think it's more accurate than the technical and sales specialist that I actually had on my contract. The company is still there, but scaled back on its branches and, as far as I know, they loosened up their policy a bit. I went on to switch industries once more to cable TV, but got back to CCTV and stuff for the next company, where I've spent four years, where I had a lot of regular clients and didn't call any of them once without a specific reason. This is classic textbook MC right here because he says, hey, this is a really bad idea. It could backfire on us. The regional manager says, nope, this is our policy. You must do our policy. It has no faults and no wrongs. We are always right. Unlike the customer, we're right. And so he just does it and then gets to go to better employment, get two weeks paid time off, and everything just goes into shambles for them. Way to go, OP. Only pay me half, I'll ruin your entire project. Click the video on your screen so you don't miss this crazy story, and I'll see you there.